What is good everyone? I'm Forrest Walker and hello from Minsk, Belarus. So if you've been following along at all, you know I just had to leave Istanbul, Turkey because my visa expired there and I'm still not allowed back into my base in Asia. So I had to find a new place to work and wait until I'm allowed home. And I chose Minsk for now. And I'm gonna get into why I chose Minsk, some details about Minsk, some of my plans I have for here, some of the first picks I've taken out in Minsk already, and then some of the content I have planned that I'm gonna create for you all specific to Minsk. So let's get into it. First off, why Minsk? Well, a few reasons. One, I didn't have a lot of options. Like I said, I can't get back into my base in Asia. I really can't get anywhere inside Asia right now. All the borders are closed. Most of the borders in Europe are closed too. There's a few places like around the Balkans where I could have got in, but once you get in, they have shutdowns and restrictions. Belarus is really the only place in Europe right now without a shutdown, without really any restrictions. The other option was Africa. Most of the places are a little further away, higher ticket prices, but Cairo was a, a definite option. I like Cairo. I covered it on the project. It's a great city. Also, the weather would have been pretty nice right now, but that was actually kind of the thing. I wanted to be in a place where it had more of a winter atmosphere, more of a Christmas atmosphere. Normally, around this time, I'm back in the States with family for Christmas, so I've never really had a chance to photograph a place around Christmas time, so I wanted to be in a place with that atmosphere and Belarus definitely has that atmosphere. It's negative six degrees out right now. It's gonna be snowing most of the time. Uh, they definitely celebrate Christmas. There's already trees, big trees at all the squares. They're setting up decorations right now. They're gonna have Christmas markets, which is another thing. Right now, everywhere is shut down, so anywhere that normally celebrates Christmas really isn't gonna be doing much this year, except for here. It might be about the only place, really. So that'll bring opportunities to photograph. And then there's a few other reasons why I chose Mints too. It's actually always been kind of on my mind. I almost covered it on the project before because there's a mysterious aura to it. It's been kind of closed off from the, the rest of the world for a bit there, but they're opening it up now. They just started a 30 day visa free option. So I had that opportunity. And then also I've never been here before. And that was the thing. I've gone through the whole 2020 without going anywhere new, which for me is not normal. Uh, obviously it's been due to the pandemic, but this was my last chance to fit in one new place. So I thought, why not come here? I finished with the project, but it is definitely a major city. There's 2 million people. It's like the 10th or 11th biggest city in Europe. Not a lot of people know much about Minsk or Belarus. It has an interesting atmosphere here. So I'm gonna cover it in my spare time. I have a lot of other work going on, but since I'll be here for a little bit, in my spare time, I'm gonna hit it just like I hit the other cities in the project. And that'll be good for creating some content too. So that's why I chose Mints. Getting into Mints was actually pretty easy. It was a direct flight from Istanbul. The one thing is they just had added Turkey to the list of requiring a PCR test. At least that's what it said online. So the one good thing though was Istanbul is basically the best place you can be for taking the PCR test. People are flying in from other countries, having a layover at the airports just to take the PCR test there and then flying to their next destination. It's all set up for it. I decided to get there eight hours early, which was around 2 a.m. At least there was no line though. But what they do is they get, you pay for your receipt, then you go to another room and they have these like stands with plexiglass and two holes. And then the nurse just puts her hand through the holes, swabs you uh, in your mouth and then your nose, then takes it, you get a, a receipt with a number on it. And then you just go online within like three, it was like three and a half hours, it was already online with my luckily negative uh, result. And then I was able to catch the flight here. Once in to uh, uh, Minsk, it was relatively easy. Uh, the passport control was, was real simple. Then the last security, they did ask quite a few questions and they did search my bag just because they asked if I had any vitamins or pills. And I said, yeah, I have vitamins and Advil. So then they wanted to see that. But other than that, it was pretty simple. So then I got a taxi and I came to my place. I'm staying in an Airbnb. It's not bad. It's a very like Soviet uh, apartment complex. I actually really like Eastern Europe and the, and the Soviet kind of character. I know it's not traditionally beautiful, but I don't know. There's something about the character I like about it. So staying in one of those typical apartment complexes is, is, is kind of cool to me. And this one has everything you need. It has a bedroom, a living room, couches, kitchen, bathroom, of course. It even has a balcony, which I love balconies. I don't know how much I'll be using it when it's negative six, negative 10 degrees, but that's still nice. And the, the heating is, is, is actually too warm. The heating's always on in here. So overall, it was relatively easy getting here and I've already had a full day out checking out Mints. When it comes to mints, there's not a whole lot of information online about mints. Like I said, it has kind of a mysterious aura to it. Uh, most people just know it by 
it has a reputation of being somewhat of a dictatorship. Uh, I'm not going to get in, into the politics, but they are currently having a lot of problems with protests. Every week since, I, I believe, August, they had an election there. So many people believe that the election was fixed. So that's going on. I don't know how much I'll be photographing that because I don't know how much I'll be allowed to. I'm guessing not very much because from what I've read online, they don't even allow protesting, period. So they usually arrest everybody. But you know me, I, I'm sure I'm going to take some risks and we'll, we'll see what happens. But there's that going on. Um, so when it comes to photography, I don't know how open it will be. My first full day out there was nice. People were photo friendly. They, they definitely think it's a little weird. I'm sure they don't see a lot of photographers around here in Mintz. It's not a super popular place to come. I, I haven't seen anyone photographing out there. So I did get some looks, but but nothing, nothing negative. So I think it's going to be pretty easy when it comes to people. When it comes to police and people like that, I don't know. I really didn't see any police out there, really. So we'll see how that goes. Some of the things you'll read online about Minsk are its Soviet character. Uh, in World War II, most of it was destroyed, so most of the buildings are built since then. A lot of it does have that Soviet character, I've noticed. Um, and then also you'll see like uh, statues of Lenin and the hammer and sickle and things like that, which is actually pretty interesting. Uh, when it comes to walking, it's not a very walkable city. That's a that's what I've read online and I can tell already by going out there. But you do have the center and you do have some areas you can walk and they do have a, a good metro here that's really cheap too. So using that, I don't think it's gonna to be too much of a problem. I can tell it's gonna be a challenging city for photography, but I like challenging. I also like the, that it hasn't been overly photographed at all. Really looking online, you can't find many photographs at all of Minsk, which is a great opportunity. And I really love that. And I do see a lot of character here and there's a lot of unique character here. One of the big things is we're in negative degree weather. It's gonna be snowing, you have the cold. Uh, one really cool thing about that is the way people dress. They, they still dress in a lot of fur and mink coats and the, the Russian you know, style fur hats and things like that. So I like that aspect. And then you have the Soviet architecture and then you have the white of the snow and, and the, you're gonna have the Christmas atmosphere. So there is a lot of things to play with there. Um, snow creates a whole new dynamic too when it comes to photography. The challenges that come with snow are one, it's not as fun to shoot in when it's negative degree weather. Personally, I love being minimal when I'm out there. I only have that camera strapped to my hand, that's it. And in this weather, of course, you have to wear layers and scarves and hoodie and, and, and mittens. And the mittens only do so much. And since you have your hand on the camera, anyone that shoots in cold weather, you know your, your fingers start to turn to ice and you can't feel them anymore. So that's challenging, but that's fine with me. Uh, the big thing is it does affect life in some ways negatively when it comes to shooting. Kind of like rain, you mostly have people moving from A to B. They're not really hanging out outside other than a few things like either smoking, waiting at the bus stop, or workers. And I've already noticed there's a lot of workers out right now because uh, they're all setting up decorations, setting up the Christmas trees, all that different stuff. And I've already photographed some of them. And that's been interesting because, again, people aren't really photographing around here. People aren't so used to it, especially seeing someone photograph some workers, they, they don't know what's going on. So they give me looks and a couple times they've come over and asked me what I'm doing. But as soon as they hear my English, uh, they don't care anymore. And the worst they're gonna do is laugh at me. Another thing I've noticed is there's not gonna be a whole lot of daylight to shoot. I'd say around four to five hours of decent light. It doesn't really start getting light until 9, 10 a.m. And then it starts getting dark already around four to five. The sweet spot really is around 11 to three, I'd say. So that's actually not a bad thing because I have a lot of other work I need to be doing. So I'm gonna be doing that and then shooting when I can. But the next video I plan is actually gonna go into more detail about my first impressions of photographing mints once I've been out there shooting more. It's also gonna get into my first approach when I come to a new city, kind of like how I approached all the cities on the major city work. I'm gonna approach this city in a similar way. So I'm gonna share different insights about that and some specific two mints too. And then I'll also definitely do another photo walk talk here. There, it's not the most walkable city, like I said, but I already have some ideas for at least one walk. I think Independence Avenue would be good for a photo walk here. It goes through some major squares and it also passes by a major market here. So I'll probably do that one, maybe one more, we'll see. Um, and maybe I'll hit a village up here too. I don't know, I have a lot of different ideas. Uh, once Christmas really gets going here with the markets, maybe there'll be something interesting here. There's a lot of different traditions I've read about here. So 
We'll see. But for sure, we're going to do the first approach, first impressions video. We're going to do the photo walk talk. And we'll do some other stuff and maybe some stuff not spe uh, specific to mints too. For anyone that's followed my blog, that was more aimed at general readers. This is going to be even more focused uh, specifically on photography and learning from photography. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Mints Belarus. I think it should be interesting because not many people know much about Minsk or Belarus. So I'll be able to share some things, especially when it comes to photography. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Cheers.